Hi, uh, David Hennessy is my name. I'm the CTO at Tree. Um, I've been here since, I was the second employee in the, in the company. I've been here since 2005, so just when we got the uh, mobile phone license in Ireland, I came and, and was involved in rolling out and responsible for rolling out and building up the network. Prior to that, I was with Tree UK for a number of years, and originally I started with uh, ESAT Digiphone, which was O2, uh, as a graduate radio planner back in 1996, when we got the license first. So it was a very, uh, very satisfying kind of circle coming back to, to take over the O2 business and be involved in, in that again. So uh, the big upgrade project is, is about really how we transform our uh, network into something that's it's fit for the future. A lot of uh, this goes back to the acquisition of O2 and the acquisition of O2 gave us, gave us uh, a starting point where we had two absolutely separate networks. We had the Tree network which was built on 3G and the O2 network which was um, predominantly a uh, 2G network but also under invested for, for, uh, for a number of years. So what the acquisition gave us was this starting point, but also this, this great opportunity to really transform these networks. We had a lot of duplicate assets and the necessity to consolidate those duplicate assets into, into something uh, much, much better than, this, than either starting point, so the sum of the parts is, is much greater than, than the, uh, the parts themselves. Uh, it's not just about a radio network transformation, it's a huge part of it, but also it's, it's about um, transforming the entire network, so transforming the data centres, we're building a brand new data centre to, to house the consolidated network. Um, it's about transforming the core network, the transmission network, the radio network, and really building a network that's fit for the 21st century, fit for the future. Um, by having a lot of duplicate assets, there's a lot of synergies to be achieved by combining those assets, but also it means that you can take the best of both, both assets and create uh, create something that's really transformed and, and future-proof. If you look at uh, the sites, the radio sites which provide coverage in the network, we have thousands on, on the, the very large network on the O2 side with thousands of sites and the same on, on the tree side. And what, what we can do is put those two networks together into a single network that, that uh, kind of harmoniously supports the, the combined customer base now. And uh, when doing that, we can transform it so we can de deploy new technologies and we can take the best site. So if this site is better than that site, we'll take this site and we can get the best, the best out of all these assets. Uh, what this gives us is really a totally transformed and new network. That's not doesn't really resemble either of the starting points, but is, is much, much, much greater than, than those. We're doing it on a ge geographical basis. So if you look at some of the areas that we've done, I think the first area was uh, Ennis. And what we've seen there is a massive improvement in, in voice performance, better than the Tree network, better than the O2 network, it's just much, much better, and a huge uplift on, in data performance as well. So the amount of data that's being used on the network is just totally, uh, totally transformed. Um, so it's something that's been very, very positive. One other thing about the programme is we've tried to make it very much a business programme. It's just not a technology consolidation, but it's something about how we transform things for our customers. So we're putting huge effort into communicating with our customers and explaining to our customers what's happening when there's outages on the network and how we're really um, improving things for them into the future. So digital transform transformation is um, it's kind of the second part of, of our uh, transformation. So similarly to the network side, when, when we took over O2, we found ourselves with really two separate customer bases sitting on two separate IT stacks with, with different levels of functionality available on both. Also, very, very importantly, we found ourselves with two cost bases that we didn't need. So for, for us, it, it meant that it was absolutely necessary, not so much to transform, but to consolidate our IT systems, consolidate our customer base into a single customer base, and consolidate the way that we can interact with our customers. So the business case was put these two things together, take the synergies, and the synergies will pay for, for the, the consolidation. However, it gives us also the opportunity in consolidating to do a digital transformation and that's really to, to read a way of redefining how we interact with our customers. So if you think of how people interact with, with legacy telco companies and how they interact with um, internet companies, they're totally different things. You're ringing contact centres, you're trying to do things, the process is sitting behind the contact centre or however you interact with the um, with the telco are, are all quite quite legacy and very, very cumbersome. So the digital transformation allows us to redefine how we 
interact with customers and be more like these inter internet customers or companies, more like Halo, that if you don't phone to order a taxi anymore, you click, it knows where you are, it's intelligent and smart behind it. So this allows us to offer that level of self-service to our customers in a way that's, that's really consistent with a transformed IT system that sits behind it. Also, it reduces our costs, which allows us to pass on some really, really great benefits to our customers. It's a, it's a real, real challenge for all mobile operators. So I think, um, firstly, uh, we've got a lot of experience in, in this area. 52% of all the data, mobile data in the country is carried on our network. So that's, that's more than all our competitors put together. So we've got a lot of pedigree and, and experience in this area. I think a lot of it goes back to um, all-you-can-eat data. We offer all-you-can-eat data to, uh, to our customers on the tree side for a very, very long time. And it really, what that means is customers can use data liberally and use data as, as they choose and not, not worry. So as a consequence, we've got a hell of a lot of data on our network and we've learned how to, to deal with that. I think in order to be able to, to deal with this level of traffic growth, and it's, it's just constant, I think we grew 70% just on the amount of traffic we took on, on the network um, last year. Somebody gave me a stat, I think we take 10 terabytes of uh, data on the network every hour. So that's, I don't know how exact this is, but 22,000 episodes of uh, Game of Thrones across the network every hour. So it's, it's just massive what's there. But what, what's really important is that you can scale your network. So this growth doesn't stop, it's, it's continuous. And the challenge in scaling a network is how do you scale legacy things? So if you've got something that was originally designed as a 2G network to carry a lot of voice traffic and you try and interpose a whole lot of data on top of that, it just doesn't work. So when we spoke about the big upgrade earlier, what we're really doing is, is transforming our network into something that's totally scalable and, and something that's really fit for purpose in the future. We don't know how much data the network needs to take, but we do know that the network has to be scalable and we know we have to be very, very good at scaling the network, so we work very, very hard internally to, to really forecast traffic well, to dimension things well, but also whenever we're deploying something new, one of the first and, and critical uh, considerations is how scalable is this? And that means how quickly can you upgrade the capacity and how seamlessly can you integrate the capacity into the rest of the network. Enjoy this video? Click here to get the latest news from siliconrepublic.com and go find us on social media.